Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Marina, I'm Russian, and in today's video I wanted to share with you my English learning story. Like how did I learn my English and why is my English the way it is? Well, here are how things went for me. Um, I began learning English when I was in fifth grade of my Russian school, and that was the usual time when Soviet kids begin learning English in fifth grade. But the problem for me was that during the, that year, my family went to live in South Korea, in Seoul. And as at that moment, I wasn't speaking English at all. And I didn't know any Korean language as well. The only possibility for me was to be on homeschooling. So yeah, for two years, I was on homeschooling. My mom was teaching me. I had all my, my uh, Russian textbooks with me and that's how things went. But the thing is that my mom, she doesn't speak English herself. So my dad does. So my dad was the one who was in charge of teaching me English. I had my Russian textbook and my dad just opened it up at the end of the book where the dictionary was and he told me, well, here are the English words that you should know, learn them. And then we'll start doing the exercises. So that's that was his approach <laughs> to the problem. Okay, um, but the thing was that um, I spent a lot of time watching TV at that period of time, like during those two years. Um, so uh, we had CNN, I think we had BBC as well, and we had a local channel which was called AFKN, uh, and it was a channel for American soldiers serving on uh, American military bases in South Korea. So most of the time I was hearing American speech from those channels because AFKN was my favorite one and they had lots of uh, children programs during the day. They had some soap operas um, in the middle of the day and then each evening of the week they had different sitcom like they had Charles in Charge, Friends, uh, Elf, mm, what else, and some other, uh, and every Friday they had a movie called MacGyver, uh, an adventure movie, as, as much as I can remember, and every Saturday, starting from 6 a.m. until noontime, they had cartoons, children programs, children movies, and things like that, so I was just stuck to TV every Saturday and the thing was that like though my English was uh, pretty you know pretty bad at the moment but I could still understand some things and there was my mom sitting beside me and with no English at all except just some few simple phrases and she was asking me all the time like what are they saying what is that movie about uh, she liked to watch soap operas, so every time she was asking me, like, what are they speaking about in that soap opera? And the thing is that watching soap operas is very useful indeed when you are learning a language. Because every time something happens in a soap opera, it is then discussed over and over again between the characters of the movie. So, um... So it's really useful. Like they are saying the very same thing over and over again in different phrases, and it's it's really good for improving your language. So it was like that uh, for me, and yeah, I can say that um, when I watched, I tried, I, like I did my best to understand what I heard, and um, usually it happened like this. Some of the words that I didn't know, I. Um, I memorized and then when my dad came back from work I would come up to him and ask him like dad what does this word means like I think it means that but I'm not sure he's like yeah it means this so watching TV did help me to learn new words and to understand how these words are used 
in which context and uh, how the sentences are built, you know, stuff like that. So watching TV did help me a lot. <clears throat> and yeah, I remember that I liked watching Sesame Street. I know that like I was 10 years old at the moment and having a 10 year old child watching Sesame Street does seem kind of strange. But guys, it did help me a lot because in Sesame Street they go th um they go through numbers, they go through the alphabet, and then um they go through colors and seasons of the year and uh some um they have little dialogues that are easy for a person who is just learning English to understand. So yeah, that helped me a lot, you know. And I can say that during those two years that I was in homeschooling, I was hearing a lot of English, but I wasn't speaking because I had no opportunity to speak English. Uh, I was doing my exercises in Russian English textbook, and that's it. And then uh, during my third year, um, our parents, when I say our, I mean my parents and the parents of other Russian kids who lived in Korea as well. Like our parents found a school for us. It was uh, a private school owned by Australian couple, by Mr. and Mrs. Grant. Now here's to say that, guys, if you're watching me, um, I love you so much and thank you so much for your understanding for your kindness back then, you know, for your support. I'm really, really grateful to you. You know, those guys there, they, those people were really, really super great. And I remember that when I first came to that school with my Russian friends, um, we sat down on the couch with my new teachers, my Australian teachers, and uh, they were first people who actually spoke to me in English. Uh, they were asking simple things like what my name was, how old I was, uh, about my family, whether I had some brothers or sisters. Um, they were asking me what I like doing, what's my favorite subject in school, things like you know, usual things. Uh, they asked me whether I believed in God or not because those people are really, really religious. Um, and I suddenly realized that I do not only understand them, pretty well but at the same time I could speak English and that was amazing I did it subconsciously I just began talking and that's it but I never talked before um, and after that conversation our teachers those teachers they came to our parents and they said that well Marina's English language is pretty good so she can um, she can study at her level like I was at sixth grade at the moment so I could uh, go to the upstairs class and study according to my program to my school program um, in accordance with my age you know and as for my other Russian kids as for my Russian friends their English wasn't so good so they had to stay in the first it, at the ground floor class uh, with the kids from elementary school to to kind of uh, enhance their English, to improve their English before they can join me in the upstairs class. So actually the whole school was divided into two classes. They had one classroom at the ground floor and one classroom at the second floor. And um, on the ground floor they had elementary school and upstairs they had children starting from 5th grade, 5th, 6th, and 7th grade. Yeah. So, um, actually that was a big plus that I was separated from my friends, from my Russian-speaking friends, because it made me um, emerge into an English-speaking environment right away. I had no opportunities to speak Russian to anyone. I had to use only English, and that was super good for me. Well, after I studied there for one year in that uh, private school, um, I was, me and my friends, we were transferred to another school. Uh, and 
this time it was international Christian school it was a bigger school um, and there were children from all over the world there I mean there were children from Latin America uh, from uh, Middle East from Asian regions from even there was even a family from Papua New Guinea <laughs> and we all used English to communicate and our teachers in that school they were from United States so American English in that school um, and I should say that yes when we entered that school we also had a conversation with our teachers and with the principal of the school and we wrote some tests to show our English and our knowledge and here again the same situation like my English was a little bit better so I was put in the sixth grade but then they told me that when I improve my English a little I can go to seventh grade and as for my friends they were in fifth grade uh, and they were attending a lot of ESL classes now ESL classes are English second language classes it means that for example instead of um, attending math classes um, they were attending English classes instead of attending science classes they were attending English classes so it was like this and actually the whole system worked pretty well and children were able to improve their English in a quite short time so yeah I studied for a year in that school and I can say that at that time my speaking my English speaking was pretty fluent, but it was more like um, more on intuition. My grammar wasn't so good. And after that, my family came back to Russia and I started going to Russian school again. Um, and in my Russian school, we had a usual English class with the standard English program. And we had an experimental class where the English was at a, at a higher level. So I was put into this experiment in the English class and um, after my teacher heard me speak, she said that my grammar was bad. <laughs> my grammar sucked. Um, I spoke a lot. I had absolutely no English, like foreign language barrier, but my grammar was terrible. So she was the first person who actually uh, tried to tell me about um, English grammar, all the tenses, you know, like past perfect, past simple and stuff like that. Uh, she did help me a lot in structuring my English knowledge. Because it is, it is important, you know, it's, it's not... Uh, good only to speak but know nothing about grammar. This is not a right situation. You have to learn both. You have to learn grammar, you have to learn the words, and you have to learn how to speak. So <laughs> these are three parts of the English language that you have to combine together. So for me it was like this. And then after finishing school, I started learning in uh, Mos Moscow's uh, University of International Relations and there I should say that I had super good English teachers I had a few of them and uh, every day of the week I had different English class so I had English classes on grammar I had English literature I had um, economics in English and I had commercial English so I had different aspects of English and I had it every day and I can say that after I graduated from the university my English was at my highest level like it was the highest level that I've ever had in my life it was the best English I ever had um, but after university I started working right and uh, my uh, first job was uh, at a Russian airline in Airflot. I worked there for four years. And yeah, like during my work there, I used English a lot because I was in international relations department and I was like, like my job was working with foreign partners 
and yes, all the contracts, all the correspondence, all the letters and stuff, and all the negotiations were all in English for me. So it was a good opportunity for me to use my English knowledge and to keep my English at the same level that I had. But you know, after that, guys, I um, I quit my job and I got married and I had I had kids, and I suddenly realize right now that for more than ten years I didn't use my English at all. Like no, of course I watched a couple of movies on English and I read a couple of books, but that's not enough. You know, that's not sufficient to keep the language. On the same level as you have so I feel right now that I have lost some of my knowledge <sighs> oh it's, it's a sad it's a sad moment yes but now I'm using I'm using my channel I'm using um, this opportunity to enhance my English again to kind of like remember things that I knew before um, but you know guys the thing is that like the problem with my English is that um, in Russian schools, the program of learning English is based on British English, almost in every schools. And uh, when I was in South Korea, um, like most of the English that I learned was American English because I had American teachers and I was uh, watching American programs and like American channels on TV. Uh, right, and um, I had a little bit of Australian English as well. Um, so right now, my English is a mixture of all those three Englishes, of British English and American English and a little bit of Australian. So I do feel that sometimes it's a bit confusing. Um, like I can mix words in my speech, like sometimes I can use British words like flat, lift, trousers and sometimes I can use American words instead of those I can say like things like apartment and uh, <laughs> an elevator and uh, pants so um, I know it shouldn't be this way like you should stick to uh, one type of English and it will be better this way but in my case yeah like having this English learning experience my English is a mixture of English languages from different countries, so um, that is not a very good thing, I know. Um, so, okay, that was my English learning experience. I hope I managed to explain it to you <laughs> the way I want it. Uh, I hope it will be useful to somebody. Um, yeah, some of the tips that I, that I used, especially watching TV, I watch you soap operas and Sesame Street and stuff like that. Um, I hope I managed to explain the importance of learning grammar as well. Oh, that's it. That's that's my story. I uh, hope it was interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, and uh, bye. Have a nice day.